This tray is going to be peas. This is speckled pea you see in the back there. And I've soaked it for eight hours. So um, that is 300 grams soaked and ready to go on the tray. So I've got the Amazon tray is completely uh, configured like I've shown in a couple of recent videos. Uh, but it's got the bubbler, it's going. It's got the nutrient, which is half strength nutrient at the proper level. So there's no screen with uh, with this particular grow because it's big. So all I do is I dump it out. And this is the first time I'm growing peas in it. So this might be a bit much. So if you look at the jar in the back, I took about a third out. Um, like I said, first time growing this. So, um, growing peas in Amazon trays. So, I figure that's about 200 grams. Uh, I can get more solid as time goes on. But essentially, you want to cover the bottom of the tray completely and then a little bit. So, I'm going to take this cover, put on there, and I'm going to use the bottom of another one since the light's going to be out anyway. The lights are on now just for videotaping. But I'm going to take this and keep it over the top just to help keep extra light out. And then I'll bring you back as, as it grows. But I had taken this off prior to this, so all I do is I just lift it off like this, spray it. The peas are looking really good. It looks like really good germination here. I'll take you across a little scan. Kind of an up close look at what they look like. And then that's all there is to it. I will check the reservoir level and add um, any um, nutrients if needed. There's a whole lot more root activity than I thought there would be, so I wanted to show you. This is only day two. Look at that. It's crazy good. Now that is what pea roots look like. They look off-colored a little bit. And the material up here as the grows go on, it does make the reservoir a little bit cloudy. Now, I can change it out, but I know from my past growing that it'll be just fine like it is. So I'm going to leave it. That's the temperature in here right now, and it is a bit warm on today. Let's see what it looks like. All right. Look at them, it's starting to grow up. The uh, well, it's monocots is what it is. It's not cotyledons, it's a monocot, which is, well, what peas do. It's a single little growth tip. So that's looking real good. I'm gonna hit it with the antifungal one more time and we're not ready to take the cover off and put it into light really yet. But I'll, I'll just keep this on is all I'm going to do. And uh, when they get a little taller, then I'll take them off. Because once I take them off and expose them to light, they're really going to bush out. I did hit it with the antifungal. Put the lid back on. I just wanted to show you what the roots look like right now. Pretty stinking awesome. I also add a little bit more of the nutrient in the reservoir there. Alright, let's see what the peas look like today. Ooh, they're even greening up some. That little bit of light that was getting underneath there is uh, yeah, greening them up a little bit. That's pretty nice. We've got some that have the tails that are lifting a little bit, but not many. Most of them are grabbing. And uh, we're going to leave it out in the light now and just let them go. These are the peas, and they're coming along great. Um, they're getting quite stiff, 
pretty soon they're going to start leafing out a little bit and that's what we want we want it to leaf out and get some of them baby uh, pea tips that are common yeah, not common but you know more common than microgreens that people eat regularly with salads look at these peas fantastic I think I'm gonna leave them for one maybe two more days probably one just to get a little bit more leaf on them peas are always a fruitful microgreen they're my second favorite microgreen, I do believe, especially when I let them leaf out like this. Now this, all this top growth right here, when they're small like this, is very tender. And it makes a rare salad topping uh, that is very, very good. It's just, you know, you don't see it a lot because it would be expensive to take tips of peas and make salads of them in mass production like you do with lettuce. But it is an, a scrumptious, scrumptious, delicious topping uh, for any salad. These shoots, these tips, are awesome. They taste great. Now, I grow blondes, what they call blondes, and a pea, if it doesn't reach the light, it'll shoot straight, a stem, just straight up. And that stem, you can plant them real close to each other and they'll become like a stick. And I have used those to make noodles of sort but the thing is as peas get older like down here at the bottom uh, they can start to get woody so we're going to harvest this thing i'm probably going to harvest it tomorrow um, and i just wanted to, to just tell you that at any time any late stage in a microgreen grow like this one there is a lot of drinking going on these things are drinking so at this very late stage in the harvest you might have to hit them twice a day with some nutrients Peas always produce a lot of greens, just a lot, and um, so it's it's very rewarding. Each one of these grows, so I'm gonna harvest these, and what I'll do is I'll put them on one of these trays or one of these uh, paper plates here, and then we'll get a weight on it, see what the overall amount for our effort is. That's a lot of greens right there, and that's packed down too. That's not fluffed up. I think we'll see um, when I do the the weight, um, the amount that's that's really there, which is a good bit. One of the things in the last few grows, or the ones in these trays I haven't mentioned, of course, is one of the key aspects of growing IHG is the lack of mold, mildew, and all the nasties that come with growing. Uh, from what I've seen on other channels in the past, growing in any kind of media like cocoa or peat or potting mix or anything like that, it just seems to be a struggle fighting those things the disease and plus when you harvest them they're kind of messy you know but when I harvest these in ISG they're pristine they're edible right now um, and you'll as you can see in here I cut them above where the little pea themselves is still attached uh, to the small bit of stem here closer to the bottom and it's just a great way to grow pristine greens, microgreens, um, very easily. Actually, just just very easily. I, I'm I don't know why it's not taking off and why people aren't doing more of this, but you know, I guess it is what it is. It's just super easy, and you get a ton of greens. And this is uh, using a tray, that Amazon tray right here, is less than half of a normal 1020. So I want you to keep that in mind when we do the weight here. Now the way I weigh is, let's see, that's in grams. We'll put it in ounces first. 
And the way I weigh is I put a cup on here because these, how small the base of the scale is and the width of the top helps support the microgreens that are in the paper plate. So the first thing we need to do is zero it out like I always do, which means tear on this little scale. Zero out. Now when I take the plate off, the weight of the plate is taken off there, 0 0.6. Now when I put the greens on here, it's nothing but the greens because the way the plate's already taken into account. So let's do, whoa my goodness. Greens are falling off. Gotta get a balance too. I like to do these things in one sitting because it just gives more credibility to no shenanigans. So I'm gonna pick these up. There's a couple that hit the floor, but we won't worry about a little bit of product. And what you see there is 15.1 ounces. It is one ounce shy of one pound of microgreens. And um, these are the fantastic shoots. I'm going to put this down over the side here. Well, let me get grams. For those who are inclined for grams. 425 grams. varies a little bit because this table is a little bit wobbly 425 grams so again let me put this down over to the side here and I'm going to get a taste of these just to share with you now if you taste any greens that you put in a salad by themselves they're not the most appealing some are good like I really love butter crunch it's one of my favorites and I can eat it by itself without dressing or any extra accoutrements. It's a fancy word, accoutrements, any extra stuff on it. Uh, but peas, well, they taste like peas. Um, if you've ever had a green pea before it's um, cooked, it has a slightly different taste. It has a greenish taste like almost all greens do. But it's, it's also sweet, and, um, well, let me just get a taste. Hmm. This is not fibrous at this stage, this young age. Hmm. It's really, really good. By itself, it's really good. It's not, let me push my camera here, the back lens darkened. Uh, it's not like butter crunch awesome but it has a very unique and tasty taste <laughs> to it that is just very rewarding and that is a pound let me tell you a pound of greens that is equivalent to a head of butter crunch and that took however many days I'm, I'm sure I put it in the video if not I'll put it in now to, uh, to grow. Mm. You know, you, you see people talk about various things and in their gardening and everything's positive and everything's always great. And I don't like to do that. I usually call it for what it is. I think I mentioned something about not caring for radish too much. And if I have any things that are going negative I tend to show those as well so I'm not just doing it to try to get likes and subscribers but to be honest and the reason is because if someone buys a kit from me which I'm probably going to sell the kits um, and I'll put something out on that soon but if someone buys something from me I want them to be able to duplicate I want them to be able to get the exact same thing that I get super easy and uh, if they can't, then there goes my integrity, right? Anyway, that's peas. And I'll uh, upload these. Thanks for watching. This is Brent. We'll see you in the next video. The way I sanitize before I wash is I just take these trays. And I think there's three there plus a few extra trays that I use to um, 
wash the microgreens or to harvest the microgreens and what have you. Anyway, that's uh, that's what I do. I just put them in the in the five gallon bucket there, and I put a cup of bleach in in the water before I put them in, mix it, then I put that in, and then top it off, and then I just use the Clorox bottle itself just to keep it underneath the water. And what that does is you can leave it for any amount of time you want. Eventually that Clorox is going to dissipate anyway, just like in a swimming pool. But um, I'm going to leave it in there for a few hours. And then I'll take it out and just wash it with some uh, liquid de uh, detergent, um, dishwashing liquid in other words, and, um, and water. And then it's ready to go for another one. There may be an instance, and you'll be able to tell when you restart the bubbler, that a, a hole might need to be cleaned out just a little bit. Um, that happens from time to time, maybe every other grow. And all you do is just take a little needle and stick it in your in the hole, uh, just you know, like a sewing needle. Uh, so that's all there is to it. I'm gonna put this at the end of all three of these new videos, just so it's uh, findable for anybody who watches these videos. How long do we gotta stay here For people we don't know and want lines All of the clothes are designer Fast cars and who knows who Yeah, I know what they wanna say They're gonna ask me if I'm gonna make it I don't care if I'm gonna have to fake it Long as I can be real